Welcome to episode 3 of my RC374 Honda 6 replica project. In this episode, I'll be showing you how I finished off making the engine, made the wheels, the front forks and the front mud guard. In the previous video, I showed you how I made all the parts of the crankshaft, built the crankshaft up in my press, assembled it into the engine and then trialled on the bar on pistons and spanned the whole thing over on my electric drill to make sure it all worked and I was really pleased when everything went round lovely. Honda made the original RC174 with a right hand or left hand gear change option so I wanted to include this on my RC374 so I extended the gear shaft through by the clutch casing and put on an additional gear lever for the right hand side shift which was Mike Howard's preferred option. I then had to modify the water pump and make it fit up with my new water galleries and then bolt it onto the engine. The next task turned out to be quite fiddly. The pistons are so small and fitting all the rings and engaging them with the bores proved to be quite hard, but I got there in the end and then I bolted the barrels down with some temporary bolts while I assembled the cylinder head. And here you can see the cam chain hanging down the back of the engine. I then fitted the one piece annealed copper cylinder head gasket and proceeded to build the cylinder head with its 24 valves, adjusting the shims as I went along, fitting the camshafts checking the clearances and then removing them again, ready to assemble the cylinder head onto the engine. With the cylinder head bolted down tight, I turned the engine over carefully two revolutions and nothing hit, so I was well pleased with that. So I put a drop of oil in the sump and spun it over on the starter motor. I was really pleased to see that after a few seconds, oil was coming up around the camshaft lobes, proving that the oil system was working just perfect. The next thing I had to do was make some exhaust clamps and some stubs for the engine so I can get some pipe bent up for the header pipes. The header pipes fitted perfect onto the engine, sweeping down three each side, missing the sump. With the exhaust headers fitted to the engine, the next thing I needed to do was make the inlet manifolds for the bank of six carburetors. I started with some 6mm plate and filed out the shapes that fit onto the engine ports in banks of two, three each side, and then welded on some pieces of tube to the correct angle to fit the carburetors. I fitted a bank of six 28mm flat slide carburetors made by OKO. They're sort of Keelin replicas. And the ignition system is a Boyer Branson Digital Electronic. I fitted a threaded bung on the left hand side casing so that I could put a socket in and turn the crankshaft over. This was brilliant for doing the ignition timing. I also made a special adapter for my DTI to do the ignition timing on the six cylinder engine because the spark plug holes are so deeply recessed between the camshafts. I extended the plunger using a motorcycle spoke and then got an old spark plug and adapted it in my lathe so that I can fit a piece of copper tube to support the DTI and screw the whole assembly down into the engine to do the ignition timing and it worked just perfect and I'll show you how I made it. The first thing I have to do is get rid of the porcelain section of the spark plug so I gripped it in my three jaw chuck on my lathe and using my side face cutter machined away the little beveled over edge where it's clamped in position. With the swaged over portion removed, the next thing I had to do was put the spark plug in my vise and cut off the earth electrode with a hacksaw. I then use a file to remove the sharp edges. With the sharp edges removed, I use my pin punch and hammer to knock out the porcelain centre section. It's probably a good idea to wear some goggles because the bits fly everywhere. And here you go, a nice hollow tube that screws into the engine, ready to accept a piece of the copper pipe and my DTI. I had a piece of copper pipe laying around that was a perfect fit into the spark plug. So I soldered it in place, cut it off the length and then inserted the DTI with the extended plunger in the middle and it was all ready to screw into the engine. So now I could set the timing up. I set piston number one at top dead centre and align the rotor with the pickups. The next thing I did was connect a twist grip throttle to my engine test bed and a starter button so I could rev up all six carburetors together. I wasn't going to have a radiator at this point, I just wanted to hear the engine run and if it ran okay I'd rig up a radiator system so I can run it for longer periods of time. Well, it's finally time to do the test run of my engine. 
I've been building for the last three months. Um, all the carburetors are synchronized. I've put fuel in the carbs for a little pot, double checked all my ignition timing, my wires. I have actually given it a couple of turns over dry just to sort of get some fuel through without the ignition on, um, which is a normal thing I normally do. All the front looks good. So here we go, and it's um, hopefully gonna work. Got a little tiny lithium ion battery. Um, so ignition on, lights up. So a little bit of throttle and we're away. how it sounded it took me right back to when i stood next to a guy martin at castle keem when he was revving his rc174 it was just amazing i was so pleased i quickly made up a radiator system so i could run it again to make sure there's no coolant leaks and there wasn't so i was well pleased with that when my ears started working again there was a noise coming from the kitchen so i went to investigate and it's tracy making some more cupcakes i couldn't believe it i was so pleased because we'd run out the first batch were just coming out of the oven, so I thought, if I'm sneaky, I can pinch one or two without her noticing. So I took one, and I took another one, and I took another one, but I put one back, so I thought that was just too much. They were so nice. After the first couple of test runs, although it was running really well, I decided I didn't really want to have electronic ignition on the RC374, because it was just too bulky to hide all the boxes away in, in a neat way. And also, the original bike had points, so I put it back to points by making a new points plate with three sets of points, and three condensers, and it worked amazingly well. I made a new points cover from billet aluminium, and that screwed straight on the side of the engine with three screws, and it also reduced the width by 20 millimeters. I'll also show you the new carburetors. The original 28 millimeter flat slides were simply too big, and I fitted these 26 millimeter round slides, and these are actually Keelin replicas as well, and they fit much nicer and look more appropriately sized for the bike and it revs so much cleaner. I also fitted a set of six carburetor bungs. These are just old bath plugs. I thought I could hear the phone ringing, but it turned out to be my neighbors, not mine. I haven't had any calls this week, but there again, I have been being very good and not unnecessary running any of my engines. With the engine running great, it was time to start making the bike. So I bought a model maker's reference book as a guide so I can look at the pictures to get the proportions of the sizes by measuring the pictures and scaling up. And this book was particularly good because it had lots and lots of photos of all the key points I needed to make. The first thing I was going to do was make the front wheel. So I went out and bought a Honda CB77 rolling chassis. It has seen better days. But what I needed was just the front hub brake plates and the forks and maybe the swinging arm and the rest was redundant. I was going to be making the hub out of aluminium so I needed some iron liners for the brake shoes to rub on. So I bought some car hubs, put them in my lathe and machined them down so I just had a ring of cast iron that I could press into my aluminium hub and pin in place. The aluminium billet for the front hub was 11 inches diameter and 4 inches wide and would only just fit in my lathe if I bolted it directly to my faceplate. I then started roughing out one side of the hub. There was so much swarf, it got everywhere. With the first side roughed out, I started machining the cooling pins in the center. Then I could turn it around and start roughing out the other side. With the lathe work finished, I put it on my milling machine on its rotary table and cut out the internal spokes. I then warmed up the hub in my barbecue and pressed in the iron liners, securing them in place with three hardened steel pins. The next thing to do was to drill the spoke holes, 20 each side plus 20 lightning holes. And here's the finished hub, all ready for spoking into the aluminium rim.
and here's all the swarf in a bag and ready to be weighed in at the local scrapyard. I had to buy an additional front brake plate because the front hub's a four leading shoe. So I need a brake plate each side of the hub. I have to relocate the pivots on the rear brake plate and the front right hand brake plate, otherwise they'd be twin trailing, which would be no good. I have to swap the pivot positions on the rear hub as well, because on the CB77 Honda, the chain drive is on the right hand side of the bike, which means the brake's on the left, but on my Honda RC374, the brake's gonna be on the right. And here's a view looking through the front hub at one brake plate with the shoes fitted. And here's the outside view of the brake plate with the linkages fitted. I stripped the forks and they are in mint condition, which is a big plus point, so I could now build up the front, front end assembly with the lower forks and the hub to check everything fitted. Because I'd swapped the pivot positions, this meant the linkage was slightly moved and I had to move the cable anchorage point. So I cut it off with my hacksaw, relocated it to its new position and then welded it back on. The new four leading shoe hub was a very tight squeeze in the CB77 forks retaining the original width between the stanchions but I got it in there in the end and I was well pleased. And here's the rear brake plate with its swapped pivot positions and relocated cable anchorage point. And here's the built up rear wheel fitted in the bike showing its operation of the cable brake. I roughed up the surface of the brake plates with my Dremel on a carbide burr to give it the appearance of a cast surface. The four leading shoe front brake has to have characteristic air scoops welded on the side, so I cut out some pieces of aluminium and welded them onto the side of the brake plates at the front, cutting away material behind to allow air to flow into the hub. And here's the front hub with its original covers. I didn't really like these that much and I soon swapped them to proper wire mesh ones. And here you can see the operation of the four leading shoe front brake. I welded on two bosses for the brake anchorage points, one each side. The next thing I had to do was make a front mudguard similar to the one in my model maker's guidebook. So I got a standard Honda CB77 mudguard, cut off the side brackets, made new side brackets, and then riveted them in place with homemade rivets to replicate the original design. And here's the finished mudguard bracket on my RC374. I had to cut the length of the fork stanchions down by about an inch so I could match the scale drawings in my model maker's handbook. I cut off the raised brackets from the CB77 top yoke, then refinished the surface with my Dremel and carbide burr. I then made a pair of clip-on handlebars replicating the Honda design. I then made the front steering tube, which will be part of the frame, fitted it to the forks along with the clip-ons and the top yoke, the mud guard and the front wheel, and this is the complete front sub-assembly. The rear swinging arm started life as a Honda CB77 swinging arm, which I had to modify by cutting it in half, reducing its width and moving the pivots from outside of the frame to inside of the frame. And here you can see the old pivots and the new pivot tube that I'm going to weld in place. And here's the completed rear sub-assembly. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. In episode four, I'll be showing you how I made the frame and fitted the front forks, the rear wheel and the engine.